Okay, so um, I just um, wanted to show the power of um, Latex, specifically the package, the German uh, graphical programming language uh, called Tixi, um, which is short for, uh, forgive my German, uh, something like Tixi est keinen Zeichen program. So uh, it's probably wrong how you pronounce that, but it's can't be that far off. It sounds really cool. Um, but it really is incredibly powerful very frustrating um, and I'm hopefully going to show why it's just so fantastic. So I'm trying to explain um, the idea of electric field vectors emanating from a source of a three-dimensional spherical object um, acting radially uh, out of the uh, sphere, the spherical. Um, and I'm trying to demonstrate uh, the concept of um, a product of electric field uh, vectors and the area through which those electric fields actually pass through. Um, so I have here two different spheres, uh, two different circles, two dimensional objects. Um, and the amazing thing that you can, that I've done over here is that you can see these arrows that are pointing outwards. So each one of those arrows represents an electric field vector, okay, in volts per meter. Um, and you've got a very small kind of circle over here um, where you have electric field vectors emanating from as well. Now the beauty of doing this in LaTeX is the following. You can basically create a program um, where you can, it, if, this is the difficult part, is creating a program. <laughs> but once you've created the program with, um, in programming you call them preprocessor directives, um, you certainly do in the C programming language, um, what you do is that you can um, change a parameter. So let's say I want to change the number of vectors around at the surface of this smaller object. So, so far it's 10. I can change that to 5. I can update the program. And what's going to happen is that we're going to have 5 arrows coming out of there, which is really nice. And let's say I want to go to 15 arrows. So I can just hit 15. Uh, sometimes, you know, these are called macros as well. And we've got 15. Isn't that amazing? Um, and that is really built up from just creating um, lines and for loops. So here, you can see over here is the cursor just uh, over here. It goes from for each k in 1 to n, stroke n. n is a preprocessor directive, um, which is a function of the number of vectors that I want. Um, and then we calculate the different angles and things like this. So it's, uh, it's really, really very powerful. So I'm going to go back to 10 over here. Um, Another very uh, beautiful thing that I can do is that I can change the offset of each um, circle. So let's say I go from, my, from minus one and I want to create more of a separation between these two circles. Um, I can do that as well. So you see how the separation has increased. I'm going to um, head back to minus one. Uh, the other thing that I can do, obviously, is I can change the radius of each circle. So let's say I want to change radius from 0 0.1 to 0 0.3, make that a little bit more pronounced. Uh, that should update all the uh, starting and ending points of all those vectors coming around like that. Now, I'm not aware of any graphical pro any graphical software where you can literally write a program to create a perfect graphic just for you, where you can literally just adjust uh, parameters like this. It, it really is amazing when it works. Um, the truth is it does work, um, but you can make very, it's it's difficult to get this right because it can be can be a little bit tepr very tep tep temperamental. Um, for instance, uh, when you're defining sine and cosines, um, just over here, I'm doing a, say, our cosine n angle, um, our sine n angle, um, like this. Um, and, you know, you have to get the braces correct. Um, sometimes you have to put brackets in, sometimes you have to put, bra you have to put brackets in if, it, if you're defining the trigonometric function in a preprocessor directive. If it's not in a preprocessor directive, you have to use braces. So things like this can make it very frustrating, but when you get it right, it's fantastic. So, um, you know, I can draw these arrows, these arrows are built in for loops. Another thing that I can do is I can change the color. So um, this notation in Tixi is saying that um, I want 70% of that color to be red. 30% uh, will be black, so I've got like a nice kind of color going on over here like this. Uh, so this is just some of the things that we can do. Um, now, if I want to kind of uh, convey a message of uh, vector fields, we know that vector fields um, 
uh, a uniform vector field on the surface means that if you have a static meter, an electrostatic meter, and you put that meter at any point on the surface, you're going to have a, uh, a magnitude being felt at every point. You're not going to have discrete magnitudes at this point, at this point, at this point, at this point, at this point. So what I can do, I can come down to my larger circle over here, and instead of saying 10, remember this is a larger circle, so I can afford to have quite a few more points. Now if I just say increase it just to 15, just for the sake of, you know, see if this actually works, so I'm going to put that to 15, and it will recalculate all the angles. Oh, isn't that beautiful? That's fantastic. Now let's say I go to 30. Uh, let's just see what happens over here. Uh, that is beautiful. That is beautiful, the name of Hagrid. Uh, let's go to 50. Um, so I'm trying to create an idea that there are these vectors going all the way around the circle. Oh, that is just amazing. It really is. Very, it's a work of art when it, when it works. <laughs> uh, now let's go to 70. Um, I know I'm not in, going into a lot of detail into how this is actually working, but if you can see in the code over here, uh, well, let's just let's just play around with it and see if it works. So we've got the horizontal offset from the zero position. Um, and we can also change that as well. So as the arrows have kind of gone out, I'd like to create a little bit more separation. So I'm going to put a seven bar offset on the on the x-axis to begin with, and we'll see what, what happens over there. Oh, OK, that's great. That's a little bit too much. Let's go to six. Um, and uh, and we'll see we'll see how that plays out. Yeah, uh, I'm happy with that. Um, let's just go back to five. Um, yeah, five is a bit close. Can we do points? Let's try five point five. I like five point five. Um, so now that we've done that, we can, or another thing that we can do, we can change the color of those uh, of those arrows as well. So um, what we've done over here, you define that in the draw command. So if you draw a command, okay, again, this is a little bit complicated to understand. I'm not going to pretend this is intuitive. It really isn't. And there's no kind of things that pop up and, and give you suggestions either. It's all with the PGF. PFG, PGF, Tixie manual. Um, so you have to kind of just get good at it. Um, but uh, it's um, it's really, really nice. So if we do a 70% black over here, now just, um, you know, just to show you, let's say we were trying to describe a magnetic field, which we're not doing. We could describe magnetic fields in blue lines. So let's say we had the red on the left, we could have the blue on the right. We can do beautiful things like this as well. But they're both electric fields. So we'll put those in red for consistency. Um, another thing that we can do is that we can shade areas inside of objects as well. We can also, um, we can do lots of lovely things here as well. So, okay, so let's keep that at 70, uh, 70 points. We've got the horizontal offset over here. Always good to um, label what you're doing. Um, the radius of the circle is five. Uh, yeah, I want that a lot larger than this. Than this. Um, and the length of the vectors. So we can actually change the length of those vectors as well. Now, I don't particularly want to change the length of the vectors because I'm trying to emphasize, um, I'm trying to emphasize that the magnitude of the electric field at any point on each surface is actually identical. Um, so I'm not necessarily gonna change that, but um, what we could do, like another way of writing this program would actually be to um, define the number of vectors in terms of the um, arc spacing, um, but that would be another, uh, you know, another way of doing that. Uh, but I've just defined it in terms of the number of vectors. So if I put 70 over here, um, and I put 70 uh, vectors, say, on the left, um, then we can see what happens over here. This is going to be way too much. Um, and then we get that kind of uh, effect over here. Uh, what was it before? I think it was 10 before. Um, yeah, so I'm quite happy with that. I think that looks really nice. Um, but that's just one of the things that you can do. And just to show you, um, so let's say we did want to reduce the radius of the uh, of the circle on the right. We can do that again using the preprocessor directive, going to three. Um, so we can really play around with this and see which, which looks really good. But it's a beautiful, beautiful tool to use. It really is. Um, it does take some time to get used to, and you have to get everything perfect in terms of the coding, and it doesn't help you. Um, it usually just spits out some kind of error saying, uh, you know, doesn't work, error, go and see the manual, which is very frustrating. 
but I just thought that uh, this would be a good way of explaining um, why the Tixi package is so incredibly powerful for um, uh, creating uh, vector graphics, which look really, really nice. So, hope you enjoyed.